So I want to spend a couple of minutes discussing obvious solutions that are not thought out as enterprise reporting solutions. Probably the main reason that SharePoint and Excel are not thought of as enterprise reporting solution is uh, for a couple of reasons. One is they weren't really designed for that, right? They're not designed for an enterprise reporting solution. And a lot of people think of these tools more as a data tracking, data entry tool, more than a consumption layer. So part of today's demo, I'm going to show you some examples of how to easily map your ServiceNow data to SharePoint. You know, whatever I show you today for ServiceNow can be done with a lot of other different tools like SAP, JIRA, SAP, uh, CAPPM, Workday, and so on. Right? One of the key pieces of this is that the approach of bringing data from different tool sets into one screen eliminates a large need to integrate data. The other solution I wanted to discuss today was to be able to display data in Excel. Currently, lots of users do this by going to some little portlet or mini report and then exporting it to Excel, right? Obviously, once they get past the role limitation, and then building a couple of pivots to show that data in the way they need. And this is probably a pretty common scenario. Um, the reason this isn't super popular is because it's very time consuming. There's multiple steps involved in creating a chart like the one I'm showing on this screen. Right? And when I get into the demo, I'm going to show you and give you ideas on how you can accomplish this very quickly in a repeatable manner. All right, so with inside of here, um, I have an Excel interface. This Excel interface basically has a direct connection via the API layer to ServiceNow. Right? So we're able to grab data from within inside of ServiceNow and display it inside of Excel. So you notice here, we have a little get button, and then the get button at the top, I have ServiceNow as the main data source, right? So when I click on the get, right, I have different options of getting data. Now, let's say I wanted to build a report around incidents, okay? But um, to build my reports around incidents, I also need to write, um, get a report around configuration items, right? Because I want to mix a report around the two objects. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come and I say I want to get, and I'm going to get my asset data, right? So I'm going to say, yes, I want to get all of my asset data that's within inside of the system. And what it's doing now is it goes to ServiceNow, does a web service call, and displays that data with inside of Excel, okay? So now I've got my first data set, okay? But now what I want to do is I want to get another data set, but instead of replacing this data that I have, with inside of the sheet, I'm going to say I want to get data in a new sheet, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some incident data, okay? So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say I want to get some incident data, and I'm going to do the same thing. I want to get all the data within inside of the system, so I'm not going to filter by anything, and I'm going to click yes. All right, so now it's formatting the incident data, and it's going to display it. So what I've done with inside of this Excel sheet, okay, is the first step, like I said, is to be able to build something that extracts the data and displays it in Excel. The second thing is give me the ability to put different objects of ServiceNow into Excel, right? And then the third thing I've done is I've configured a little component that says whenever I run incidents, so the incident interface, right, I want you to dynamically build me a dashboard of that data mixing the data in with inside of incident and with inside of assets and put it in another sheet. So within this case, right, I just built a little macro that basically pivots that data from those two from those two sheets and displays it inside of a sheet. So now I can take this, right, and I can give this to anybody and they can say, well they can come here and say, well I want to actually see um, I don't know, the incidents that are new. And by utilizing the filtering with inside of Excel, right, this now gives me a, an ability to be able to visualize all of my data real time extremely quick, right? And now, why, why did we pick Excel to be able to do this? The beauty about Excel is once I extract the data and I contain it with inside of a sheet, then all of my reporting and my dynamic reporting becomes extremely quick, right? I can filter by the data, by any of the time slices or, or these data slicers, and these data slicers become 
extremely responsive, right? So I don't have to wait and generate and build new reports based on new filtering criteria because I already have that data set within inside of this Excel, right? So like I said, in this specific case, um, for, for this demo, I only had, you know, the little dashboard that was built, right, after I did the incident data extract, right? As you notice, I did an asset data extract first, but what I could have said is, first do an asset data, then do an incident data, and then once you do the incident data, build me the dashboard, right? Um, the same thing applies when we do, for example, data accuracy, right? And I'm gonna open up another Excel sheet in a couple of minutes that's gonna show you how we, how we do that, right? So we basically extract the data from ServiceNow, display it inside of Excel, right? and then dynamically build a dashboard that measures the accuracy of your data, right? And obviously, this gives you the ability not only to be able to manage your data, right, um, to view it, but you can also make changes to your data in flight directly from within side of Excel and literally load it back to ServiceNow. So like I said, this not only gives you the ability to be able to visualize your data, but push it back in. But ideally, like I said, all we're doing, you know, is initially we we grab this data set, okay, from an API call, right? So we do an API call that extracts this data set from ServiceNow and puts it in the sheet, right? And then we grab this data from ServiceNow to put it in another sheet, and then we build the dashboard. Now we did all of these three steps manually, and then we wrote a little macro that tied them in together. So, like I said, this is much different than having to go through ServiceNow, right? Because if you did this through ServiceNow, you would go through the port that you would extract that data, then you'd have to extract it, open up that new sheet, copy it, paste it, paste it in here, make sure that the cell, the headers stayed the same, do the same thing with the other data, right? And then you pivot that data together, right? You stitch it together to be able to build that one report. So like I said, once once you build this logic right into the Excel, it becomes very quick and very effective for people to be able to manage their data, right? Visualize it and view it in a very comprehensive form. I have lots of different views that we've provided into SharePoint. A couple of common common examples, right, of what people want is, you know. Like I said, incidents is probably the most popular dashboard that people have, right? So how are we actually building these? The way we build these is we are doing little web parts, and these web parts do web service calls to display ServiceNow dynamically within inside of SharePoint. So I'm gonna I'm gonna cover a little bit of how we build these web parts shortly, right? But you know, I would say that most of the common scenarios that people have is you know, um, dashboard views for specific people, right? This is a very common view that people have, which they call my stuff, right? So for example, in this case, you can see that I have my stuff and in my stuff, I have my ServiceNow stuff, I have my CAPPM, my SAP, my Salesforce, and so on, right? So it's just different data sets that I can now display with inside of SharePoint. And from within inside of here, I can drill down into my SharePoint infrastructure. Let's say, for example, um, I don't know, I have a, what's a good example here? I might have an asset that I want to bring, right? So with inside of this asset, I can now drill down into this. I'm just going to give it while I, while I wait for this, I'm just going to display, oh, here we go. So what it does is it'll dynamically build a site passing the parameters of that particular asset and be able to push that data and feed it inside of SharePoint, right? So it allows you to visualize any data real time directly from within inside of ServiceNow. So sky's the limit, and it's not only data that's related to that object, right? It also allows you to do your document management and manage and view your documentation from within inside of ServiceNow inside of SharePoint. So this is a common scenario. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna come and open this up in Internet Explorer. And the reason I'm gonna use Explorer is because I'm gonna show you how we can actually edit and create these pages dynamically from ServiceNow. So here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say I wanna edit this page. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a web part inside of here that brings specific data from within inside of ServiceNow. So what I've said is I want to insert, I'm going to insert a web part, I'm going to select our custom web part, and I'm going to say I want to add a portlet component to it. So what this does is this now creates a container for me to be able to display data specific to ServiceNow within inside of this screen. And here what I'm going to say is I want to say edit this web part. So what this does, once I click on edit this web part, it actually connects dynamically to ServiceNow and says, get me all of the available data feeds within inside of that environment. So now I can say, well, I want to bring out um, an incident, right? And then I can edit the columns. I can display the data any way I like. I could say, I can make this, I can turn this into a pie, a bar, a graph, a chart, anything that I like directly from within inside of SharePoint. 